It's Scorpio season and you know what that means, we need to make a baddie. If you happen to like true crime, you might already be aware that there are a lot of Scorpios that do bad things. So naturally, that's where I went. We're kind of creating a villain here. I've got my tea, we're in the same sketchbook as last time, let's do this. Honestly, there isn't too much planning for this one, but I think we'll be able to piece it together. Oh no. Is this gonna fit? Well, we're off to a fantastic start. I don't know what happened there. We're starting off in the same Pinterest board. I have everything all together in one and it kind of just goes in order. First, we're gonna quickly go over the traits that a Scorpio has. We'll go into detail later on when we piece together the story. Scorpio has some really cool colors. Black, deep reds, dark blues and purples. Look how dark that color palette is with a random kind of gray. Is it these? I think it might be these. Kind of giving vampire vibes, honestly. It is an odd colour palette, I must say. The ruling planet is Pluto, but I thought Pluto wasn't a planet anymore. Okay. Oh, the crystal's obsidian, that's cool. It's unnecessary for what we're doing, but it's cool. And the element is water. The most important part of Scorpio, which is kind of self-explanatory, is the scorpion. Okay, is that kind of like a scorpion in a simple form? As guessed, the Scorpio has some quite big weaknesses. Whilst they are passionate and persistent, charismatic, resourceful, they do have some bad traits. Scorpios are obsessive, secretive, vengeful, suspicious, and violent. Which is why they make great serial killers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know I've done quite a few negatives, but when you compare this to Virgo or Libra, they are pretty bad negatives. Let's have a little look at some art inspiration now. Starting off with this really cool design. I love the background, I love the simple colours. This one is similar. We've got a character, but they've kind of included like claws here, which looks really cool. Number one, there's quite a lot actually for Scorpio. I love the hair in this one. Okay, so I saw this picture of a scorpion from overhead, and do you know what I thought? This turned upside down kind of looks like it frames a face. Like, could these not kind of be curtain bangs with the hair on top? That's what I thought of. Okay, I saw this photo come up and I thought if that doesn't represent a Scorpio, how terrifying does this person look? <laughs> the hair's going to be going up into a scorpion kind of ponytail. It's going to look a bit crazy, but a big bold lip. Somebody that is so attractive they're kind of scary that's what we're going for this character is non-binary so we're going to want to get both the feminine and masculine features there i want to keep the bold lip but they could wear a suit to look even more scary i really like this pose i think it is intimidating so i'm gonna do this the face is gonna have a lot of eyeliner with a red lip and it's gonna look a little bit more like the other person oh that's cool we're gonna save it. And then we kind of need like siren eyes. I mean, I think they're pretty intimidating. I have no clue how the hair's gonna go, but I guess we'll figure that out. Okay, the hair, the bit I've been putting off. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking kind of like, so it needs to be kind of like that. Going into two points there might be a little bit better. That. Yeah? Is that super extreme? Is that kind of dumb? Probably, but we'll give it a go. We'll actually go kind of here, and then we'll cut out the ear. Obviously, it will need to actually be like the shape of a face as well. Honestly, this looks so dumb. I'm going to need to nail the sketch to make this idea work. I do like the idea of doing some kind of framing around this though. What if we kind of make it look like a scorpion with like this maybe? Would that work? I mean it kind of gives off like <laughs> comic book villain vibes. 
This is a wacky idea, okay? I don't know if this is gonna work. I mean, they're gonna look different from all the other characters, that's for sure. It's gonna have to be a good sketch. And I'll see you for the painting. If there's one star sign that's been requested or looked forward to the most, it's Scorpio. People are fascinated with Scorpio, myself included. And those who are Scorpios are proud to be. So let's explore what makes this star sign so enticing. Scorpio is the eighth astrological sign, depicted as, unsurprisingly, the scorpion. It's a water sign, which makes them emotional and sensitive. All water signs are empathic by nature. Its ruling planet is Mars, the god of war and victory in Roman mythology. Though recently, it's been associated more with Pluto, god of the underworld. To be honest, I can't seem to find a reason behind this change, but no other sign has this change, so I don't know. Scorpio is also a fixed sign, which apparently makes them resistant to change, but more importantly, makes them possess a great willpower. All of these create the image of Scorpio being manipulative or even an evil sign. Though, this is just an interpretation based on pop culture and faulty human pattern recognition. What a Scorpio is, is in fact patient, intelligent, driven, and strong-willed. They simply know what they want and are willing to play the long game to get it. Of course, this could be seen as obsessive and manipulative, but could also just be somebody who is driven and ambitious. They're not bad traits, as someone with these will most likely be successful in whatever field they want to be. They plan for the long game. They're usually private and closed off people, with one stark exception. Above any other star sign, Scorpio is the most closely related sign to physical intimacy. They seem like a guarded individual who's always on watch, playing their cards close to their chest. So this is the key time for a Scorpio to truly relax and connect with others. The only time they're not thinking or planning their next move. Because of this guarded and ambitious lifestyle, Scorpios crave control. They are meticulous about everything and wish to control everyone and everything around them as much as possible, which again feeds into these negative opinions when another interpretation is that they just want security. Fictional Scorpios are exactly who you'd expect, to the point where you wonder which idea came first. The characters who are Scorpios are made to be Scorpios because they are ruthless and ambitious. But because of this, Scorpio is then associated with these traits, meaning more characters that are ruthless and ambitious are made into Scorpios. This media cycle is only seen with Scorpios and Geminis. It's an odd cycle. Miranda Priestley from The Devil Wears Prada, a highly ambitious woman always thinking steps ahead of anyone else, who will do anything to keep her position, to the point where the very title of the film is naming her The Devil. Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders, Bruce Wayne, Black Widow, and even Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Are these characters Scorpios because of who they are, or is it the other way around? Speaking of Patrick Bateman, Scorpios and serial killers are often linked especially by the media. This may be due to their traits, but research shows limited linkage between star signs and serial killers. There isn't one standout zodiac for serial killers. However, water signs are shown to be the most common zodiac signs amongst serial killers. Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio account for 28% of all killers analyzed. But the most famous serial killers are pretty much spread all around the calendar. The Son of Sam was a Gemini, Ted Bundy a Sagittarius, and John Wayne Gacy a Pisces. Granted, Charles Manson was a Scorpio, but there isn't much connection. Scorpios have big traits and make for a good story. So, shall we meet Scorpio? 
Scorpio and Terrors was born into wealth and comfort. Their family weren't exactly royalty, but they might as well have been. Their great-grandfather made a name for himself as a sellsword, making enough money and reputation to retire while still young and healthy. By the time of the Long War, he had set up a guild of mercenaries and sellswords, which made a lot of money. And by the time Scorpio was born, their family had interests in every business imaginable. Shipping, silks, fine art, building, logging, they were all linked to the Antares family. Whilst this gave them great wealth, Scorpio wasn't going to see a penny of it, for Scorpio had the great misfortune of having many older siblings, seven older siblings in fact, this meant it was highly unlikely that they'd hold any important role in the family's business. When Scorpio questioned this as a child, their mother took them to one side and told them the truth. They'd never go hungry nor go wanting, but if Scorpio wanted more in life, their only option was to marry someone rich. Scorpio did not like hearing this. Hearing that the only way they were going to go up the ladder would be to give up their freedom and identity. It was not acceptable. Determined to avoid this fate, Scorpio worked hard at their studies, like extremely hard. They were fiercely intelligent with a natural gift for numbers, able to deal with complex ledgers and business transactions. Scorpio made sure that their father saw exactly what they were capable of, and soon enough they were helping out in the business. At just age 12, they were given an incredibly small role helping with the accounts for the property the family owned in town. Scorpio saw this as an opportunity, a way to get out. They noticed that almost half the tenants didn't pay on time, and over the years, the family was losing out on a huge chunk of profit. So, Scorpio had an idea. They sent out a notice to all, stating that the rent was dropping. A simple change, but this meant more homes were actually paying. Soon, the cash came rolling in. And it's at this point that Scorpio would have been considered a business prodigy. That's if their father knew. Scorpio had not told a soul about this little scheme. All the extra cash was funneled safely away. Their family didn't even realise they were being robbed. With this cash, Scorpio worked to secure their future, investing in other properties and ventures. Soon, they'd amassed a small fortune and an even smaller empire, making sure to stay just below the radar of the family. As the years went on, Scorpio matured into a shrewd person of business. On their 18th birthday, Scorpio went to see their eldest brother, who had now become the head of the house since the passing of their father. Scorpio requested, well, demanded, a more important station. Quite simply, they wanted to be in charge of all financial decisions for the family business. All investments, purchases, sales and charters were to be approved by Scorpio. In their eyes, they were more than capable of this, and much more. To the eldest brother though, Scorpio was seen as arrogant and entitled. He just laughed, encouraging everyone else to join in. And soon they were all laughing at poor dumb Scorpio. He told them to just keep to their books and leave the important matters to the men of the family. And once more, just like when they were a child, Scorpio was told they were never going to be important. The fortunes of the family turned over the next couple of years. Ships and caravans started being raided, and no matter what protection they paid for, it wasn't enough. They were outbid and outmaneuvered on trade agreements. Stores and homes were bought out by other merchants and landlords. Even the guards, who could always be relied on to turn a blind eye when needed, were becoming a nuisance. The coffers of the Antares family were beginning to run dry. Soon, the eldest brother had no choice. He reached out to a mercenary group and asked for their services. The Emperor's Sting were a new but highly effective group that had recently set themselves up, only becoming well known over the last six years, ranging from hunters and warriors to little more than thugs. The mercenary group were hired for aid, and they worked like magic. 
all the troubles of the past couple of years were dealt with overnight. Sure, these new mercenaries soon held more power in town than the guards, and sure, they kept asking for more payment, but this was worth the price. The eldest brother was securing the family's future. All could see what was going to happen, but none could make the arrogant family lesson. The Empress Sting was soon asking for more than the family could afford. Property was being handed over, trade and goods sold all to pay for this protection. Soon, even that wasn't enough. The Antares family was given a notice. The leader of the Empress Sting would be paying a visit to renegotiate. The brother knew it was all over. The family waited for their end to come, to see who had pushed them over the edge. Everyone was gathered in the main hall awaiting their fate. The door barged open and twenty armed guards entered the room. They wore dark armour with flashes of red and purple. The guards were all dressed identically in high quality steel, no matter their gender or ethnicity. Nothing but the finest weapons and cloaks. They were there to show the wealth and power of their leader, and to remind the Antares family just how little they had left. The guards parted to allow one more to enter. A short and slim stature, with an air of confidence that the family found suffocating. They barely recognised their own kin, dressed in a fashion not seen in these parts. A dark suit, simple, elegant, intimidating. Scorpio smiled at their brother. They had won. Scorpio took control of the family, allowing their siblings to keep to their own lives and to even keep their own positions. But there was no mistaking the truth. Scorpio was in control now. With the Antares name, Scorpio held all the power of the trade and reputation such a family had. Through the Empress Sting, they controlled the population, always keeping a conflict brewing. To keep an empire strong required a foe, and Scorpio was happy to manufacture them. On their seat at the top of the family, with one hand controlling both sides of the law, Scorpio had become one of the most powerful people in the kingdom. If only that had been enough. And this is our new character, the first true villain. The family name Antares actually comes from the name of the brightest star in the Scorpio constellation. What do you think? Does the hair look like claws? I'm loving the colour theme. It's very different to my usual style. But this painting and story has been a lot of fun to make. If you've missed any characters in this series, check out the playlist below, where I've probably already created your star sign. Subscribe so you don't miss the remaining characters, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!